Howdy folks, Chuck K45 back. Um, and what do I have to show for you tonight? Well, I bought something. I bought a 3,000 pound budget brand A-frame lift. Um, as far as the actual height on the sucker goes and the length of the beam, eh, not 100% sure on either. I know that these, uh, these, these A pieces here are each 8 foot, 10 inches tall, give or take an inch. Um, the casters, I haven't measured to see how much they bump it up. These, uh, these casters actually were not uh, original to this. These came off of a, a different industrial, or out of a different industrial setting. This used to be bolted to the floor. Um, and then the guy that I bought it from, who's also the one who sold me the 340 combine, and, uh, or sorry, not the 340 combine, the 340 tractor and my 45 combine. Um, when he got a hold of it, he had those, those uh, wheels there, and they just so happened to line up with the bolt holes from when it had been bolted in the floor. Um, this used to be in, we had a very long discussion that involved partially this, and then it went on to forklifts, and then it went on to... Uh, old tractors and things like that so I could be completely and totally wrong here and I definitely don't want to be wrong but this 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 hoist or this A-frame I'm sorry um, came out of I believe it was the Clark forklift factory uh, I could be wrong on that um, and it was bolted in this was what they would use excuse me this is what they would use to pick up the uh, the big electric batteries for the electric forklifts and set them in the forklift chassis. Um, this beam is original to the lift. The only reason there's this orange paint down here is because, you know, that sticks out an awfully long way behind that truck. Um, these casters came out of some industrial plant in Detroit. He's had them since 1986. These casters are super, super heavy duty. These will probably outlive me. They'll probably, with a little care, outlive my children. And if we get lucky, they'll outlive my children's children. And considering I don't have any children yet, that's saying something. Um, and I can sort of hear you already. Where's your hoist at? You know, where's, where's your, your lifting things? Well... In here, I have a one-ton budget manual hoist. Here's the, the lifting chain, and then this in here is the actual, uh, you know, pull on this chain to raise and lower this chain. Um, I'm kind of surprised it's this roller chain style, but I am perfectly okay with that because, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but that would seem to be much... Um, heavier duty than just the regular chain lifts of that type. I mean, I, I could be wrong on that. I don't know. I haven't really studied these things. But that's not all. There is something else. Um, there is the one trolley here. And the other one is, I believe, on the other side. It's, it's in here somewhere. Um, pretty sure it's over there. I think down in here some, yep, up in here is the other trolley, I know, I'm sure. There's a caster, the other caster's here, maybe the other ones are underneath the spare, oh, nope, yep, nope, that's up here somewhere. Not important right now. What is important is the fact that that's not the only hoist I have. While I was there, the uh, guy who was helping him work on his backhoe says, Hey, you want, oh, that, that's got a manual hoist. You want an electric hoist for that? I'm like, well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say no. So he goes, well, I got just the thing. So he ran home and grabbed this budget brand electric hoist, one ton, with the same type of chain. Um, I haven't exactly looked at this very hard yet. I just, I sort of saw it, you know, saw what it was. And, and so I'm, I'm uh, 
pretty pretty happy with that and he sold me that for 50 bucks <laughs> so I spent 400 on the a-frame with you know the casters and then that manual one and then I paid 50 bucks for the other um, what I'm going to use this for among other things is it is certainly going to get used to help support the rear of this tractor uh, right there where the bell housing is. I'll just roll it over the back of the tractor and put chains, one chain on either side of the um, of the uh, bell housing of that tractor. And then we can put the engine on with the cherry picker and it'll be all hunky-dory and safe that way. Um, after that gets done, more than likely after anyway, I'm going to attempt to roll it outside the back door because I'm not going to roll it around this way and I will roll it back there and I will use it to pick up that stupid pickup bed because I tell you what this pickup bed has been a nightmare I've tried several different times to pick it up with various different methods so that I can back the, that truck underneath it and uh, slowly adjust it and figure out you know where exactly I need the um, I need to drill holes in the frame if I have to drill holes. I'm really hoping I get lucky and that this thing has uh, holes in the angle iron underneath it and that they just so happen to line up over here and I can I can just put bolts in it. Um, I know that's I know the chances of that happening are slim to none, but this thing here has just been it has been a nightmare to try to pick up. Um, and I already know that the reason that this happened is because there's so much weight up here and I'm sure how I hooked the straps up didn't help anything but you know I tried to uh, to hook this up and I had that a little more towards the center and I tried to pick it up all centered and I got it up to about here and then it just decided it wanted to to, to tilt forward on the um um because I have my uh my little cherry picker out here coming in from the back because I figured if I could get it up back here then I could back that truck underneath and it wouldn't be uh, um, it wouldn't interfere with the, the hoist at all because otherwise I would have just brought this up as, as far as I could and put something you know maybe the um, the tractor under the back or sorry the tractor with a chain at the back to, to hold it up and then I would have put the cherry picker in here from the side and picked it up and I could have and I would have backed the truck underneath but you know can't do that because the legs of the cherry picker would be under the way it would be in the way and I can't uh, you know my other thought was put the cherry picker back here sorry for moving the camera around um, pick the uh, the front up here up with the tractor and you know then I could back the truck underneath like that the only problem with that is there's not enough space in between the front of that, uh, or, sorry, there's not enough space on the loader. If I were to, basically, if I were to, I'm going to edit that out. Basically, if I were to pick up the bed with the loader tractor from the side like that, it would swing over and it would hit the grill of the tractor. And I am not going to do that. If I had an old beater tractor, yeah, I probably wouldn't care. But seeing as it's a nice John Deere tractor, it's been really well cared for, you know, it's not mine. I am not going to uh, to do anything even rem remotely sketchy with it. Um, so, anyway, that's what I got going on. Um, I'm not going to work on the hoist tonight because I am tired as heck. So... I'm going to shut the video off, go inside, and tomorrow after church, um, I'm going to pick up a couple of grade 8 bolts, or actually a bunch of grade 8 bolts, some for the casters and some for the beam on top, and I'll come home and throw those and some new washers and nuts on it, and I'll get it all put together tomorrow, and uh, with any luck, I'll remember to bring my camera out with me and set it up somewhere so you can watch me flail around trying to get this thing together as one person um, but anyway guys thanks that's what i got going on so i'll talk to you tomorrow with any luck